I'm Elaine Harding. Welcome to my blog. Start with Elaine.com, and welcome to this Fun Fridays project. Back in 2014, um, I made one of these card in a box. <clears throat> it was shared by Monica Gale, and it was all the rage back then. I'm going to update this using the Myths and Magic Suite in the new Spring Summer Catalogue. This is from the Magical Day Bundle. If you buy the stamp set and the dies together, it will save you 10%. The card base, you need a whole A4 sheet, a piece of Whisper White for the back, measuring 5 and 3 quarter inches by 2 and a half inches, that's 14.6 by 6.35 centimetres. Contrasting uh, DSP, this is from the Myths and Magic Specialty DSP. They have iridescent glitter designs. Can you see that? On the one side, and colourful imagery on the other side. You need three uh, of one pattern cut at two and a half inch square. And then for the bottom three panels, you need three pieces cut at two and seven eighths by two and a half inches. So that's 7.3 centimeters by 6.35 centimeters. For the panels on the three flaps and the back, you need four pieces also cut at two and a half inch square. For the battlements up there, you need two three quarter inch by three inch pieces in the basic grey. I use stamping blends to colour my figures. Um, <clears throat> this is in Cherry Cobbler, Bermuda Bay, Daffodil Delight, Smoky Slate, um, I think this is the skin tone, it's ivory, and a wink of Stella, plus the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Punches I used is this Best Badge Punch and the Spiral Punch. This is sadly retired, but if you have it, great. Brick Wall Textured Impressions Embossing Folder, and of course your Big Shot. On your basic grey sheet, A4 sheet, have it with the long side up to score at two and three quarter inches with a light grey blade um, that will be I will do the metric measurements in a minute so two and three quarter inches by five and a half inches by eight and a quarter inches and at 11 inches. So in metric that is 7, 14, 21 and 28 centimeters. Rotate your cardstock anti-clockwise 90 degrees and then score at 2 and 3 quarter inches. 7 centimeters. Then slide it along and cut at five and seven eighth inches so that's 15 centimeters this time you use the dark gray blade now reserve that because you need it to make the bridges for the inside of the box <clears throat> now while we've still got the trimmer out with the left narrow score line on your left on the second score line in another three quarter inches you want to use that line and put it on the three quarter inch mark there and cut. Okay, and then I want to cut these in three, so um, measure three quarter inches because I want three bridges and another three quarter of an inch. I'm going to set those aside. And then these ones you want to do in a Z fold. Now you've uh, cut your bridges, you can discard this bit. The narrow side on uh, score line on your left, you want to cut away that rectangle. 
Now you can either cut this by hand or you can cut it with your uh, trimmer. Narrow score line panel will be on your right. It's shorter flats at the top. So line up your uh, score line on the trimmer in the cutting groove and then you cut from that score line. Burnish all your score lines. So I put tear and tape on the flap and then you just fold the box over <coughs> to seal it. So essentially establish which is the back and you want to glue your white piece to the back. And then now you want to glue the rest. Next bring in your Big Shot platform, base cutting plate at the bottom, pop your four pieces of basic grey, two and a half inch square pieces of cardstock onto your embossing folder, pop cutting plate and you're ready to run it through the Big Shot, so I'll do that off camera. I'm using the basic grey ink pad and a sponge dauber and I'm going to just sponge the edges to give the <clears throat> brickwork a bit more definition. Now we can adhere the pieces to the top part. And glue the last bit together. So this straight back panel is my parapet. Bring in my retired spiral punch, centre it on it so it's equidistant make sure you're sticking it on the right piece so I've put the flaps of all those down and leaving the upright at the back so let's glue that together I think I'm going to use that this tape because it's less messy Now we want to do these bits here. Now to cut the badges up, so you want to cut that point to point. Pop them together like that so they're stacked on top of each other and just snip right across. Do the same for the next badge. So basically you're cutting it in half, stack them on top of each other and then cut the other half and you need to make sure that that is the one that fits it before you glue it on. I've got two Bermuda Bay on the yellow, now I want the yellow on the Bermuda Bay. We can stick these two on the sides like so and this time we want to cut the yellow one so we're using the big scissors because <coughs> that has a better reach and then we want to cut that right across in a straight line. Glue it onto the blue shield. Now I've placed my stamps on this big block <clears throat> so that it leaves me room to cut the dies. So this is to show you how 
you can do the same method. I think earlier in the week I did a video to show you how I um, use the stamp apparatus to secure my dies if I'm making lots and lots. So then I placed it on this um, press and seal wrap. So you see it's in the exact same position and I can go and die cut that. All I have to do is pick that up, put it on my magnetic platform base cutting plate, the cardstock, followed by the dies, top cutting plate, and I'm ready to run it through the big shot. So I'll do that off camera. Peel it off and cut them out. And I'll leave the dies in situ for the next lot. And I also die cut some spares to um, sandwich the blank one onto the bridge. If you stick it on, you stick the coloured image on the front of the bridge and then use the back one to marry it up and stick it together like so. To save time, I've already coloured my night in Bermuda Bay, Daffodil Delight and the Smoky Slate Combo. The flame I used the Cherry Cobbler and the Daffodil Delight Combo. For the Dragon I used a little bit of the Light Bermuda Bay, the Cherry Cobbler and the Daffodil Delight Combo. For the Wizard I used um, the Basic Grey for his beard, the Ivory for his skin tone and the Bermuda Bay for his costume of Stella for um, to highlight some of these bits on the dragon and the wizard. I'm going to stamp the greeting in in Bermuda Bay. Clean the stamp and stamp it in tuxedo black memento ink. To stamp your one of a kind on the back of this. I should have done it before I glued it on. I'm going to use this little um, stamp here, stamp some stars. Now it's time to attach the bridges. So I want glue there and glue on the back of that. So Glue it at the top, make sure that is straight and it's at the top also. Best to fold it down like that, make sure it sticks and leave it like that for a little while until it bonds. Do the same for this. Now comes the fun bit, just a dollop of glue on the, well cover all of him because you're going to need to attach it to the back, or well, the back piece has to attach to the front. Glue the top together, get it all aligned, leave a gap there. Now you have to put glue on both sides. And then pinch together. So next we want the knight, so glue all over him, glue on the bottom of his legs on the front, make sure you keep the bottom bit apart and just glue the top. So there's a gap there that you can pop inside here like 
hope so. Last of all is the wizard. So <clears throat> just glue on the bottom of the front wizard, the coloured wizard. Marry and glue the rest of him together except for the bottom. So leave that gap so you can pinch it and put it on the front. Sandwich it together, pinch, so that it's secure. One last thing to do, to cut the sentiments. So bring back my magnetic platform, place my cardstock in. I want to cut the bottom half of this magical piece. And then afterwards, I'm going to cut the top half to include I hope your day is. So then I can stack them like I did for this card here. It's a top cutting plate on and I'm ready to run it through the big shop. So I'll do that off camera. Pop some dimensionals on. Trim that off, pop that on. I forgot to press record, but I put a bit of glue back on the back there and just glued it to the back of the card. So there is the card finished. Oh, one more thing. The flame from his nostrils. We can't have a dragon without his flaming nostrils. Put a bit of glue on this tip here so I can attach it to the back. So there's the card finished. Which do you prefer, the, the one in the dark grey or the Sahara sand one? Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Do give me a thumbs up if you uh, liked it and please subscribe or share on Facebook if you haven't already and my grateful thanks if you do. If you're watching from YouTube you'll find the list of supplies I use below this video in the show more section with direct links to my online store. They will also be listed on my blog at blogdogstampwithelaine.com. You can find me on Facebook, Pinterest or Instagram. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back soon. Bye.